financial management and in this course this is 180th module and we will be talking about IRR and in IRR we'll discuss that how the process of interpolation takes place and how by using the method of interpolation we reach to an exact or very close to the actual internal rate of return. Uh, we have discussed that internal rate of return is the actual rate of return earned by the project for the investor. And to determine that internal rate of return, we have to apply various rates of return one after the other and that is called a hit and trial method. Agar pehli martaba humne jo rate apply karke present values calculate ki hai, agar un present values ka sum outflow se zyada a gaya hai, to hume agle higher rate ki taraf move kar jana hai. Aur agar wo sum outflow se net present uh, present values ka sum kam aya hai, to hume rate ko रिड्यूस करना है और इस तरह हम एक रेट से दूसरे रेट के ऊपर मूव करते चले जाते हैं यहां तक कि हमारे पास दो ऐसे रेट्स आ जाते हैं कि जिनमें से एक रेट हमें हायर वैल्यू दे रहा है और दूसरा रेट हमें लोअर वैल्यू दे रहा है किस चीज की हायर वैल्यू हमारी प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ कैश इनफ्लोस आउटफ्लो से हायर होंगी एक रेट पर और दूसरे रेट के ऊपर कम होंगे अब इन दोनों रेट्स के दरमियान हमने एग्जैक्ट आईआरआर की वैल्यू को डिटरमिन करना है और उसके लिए हम इन दो रेट्स को इंटरपोलेट करते हैं हम इस मॉड्यूल में देखेंगे कि वो इंटरपोलेशन का फार्मूला क्या है और उसके अंदर किस एक्यूरेसी के साथ आईआरआर को डिटरमिन किया जा सकता है इंटरपोलेशन के बहुत से मीनिंग्स हैं डिक्शनरी मीनिंग्स लेकिन यहां पर जब हम इंटरपोलेशन का वर्ड आईआरआर में यूज करते हैं तो इससे हमारी मुराद यह है कि हम दो गिवन या नोन रेट्स ऑफ रिटर्न के दरमियान एक ऐसा अननोन रेट ऑफ रिटर्न जो कि हम अभी डिटरमिन नहीं कर सके उसको इंटरपोलेशन के जरिए से डिटरमिन कर लें so i dekhte hain ki ye working kaise hoti hai again this is the same spreadsheet that we have seen in the last module where we did the calculations of irr we started with 10% because the sum of present values was more than outflow so we moved up to 20% still it was more so we moved up to 25% and at 25% we can see that the sum of present values is 95,821 which is less than 100,000 that is the outflow. Yani yaha par hamari present value of inflow kam ho gai hamari outflow se. Is ka matlab hai ki hamara IRR 25% se kam hai. Or 20% pe hamari cash inflows ki present value 100,000 se zyada hai is ka matlab hai ki hamara IRR 20% se zyada hai. Ab hume 20 or 25% ko interpolate karna hai. Interpolation ke baad hum exact IRR ki value determine kar sakte hai. Shayad mein kahun ki exact value to thik na hoga lekin very close to the exact value or the actual rate of return of the project. इंटरपोलेशन का फॉर्मूला क्या है कि वो दो रेट्स जिनको हम इंटरपोलेट करना चाहते हैं यानी इस केस में 20% और 25% तो हम उन दोनों रेट्स को इस तरह कंसीडर करते हैं कि 20% पे हमारी क्या नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू या प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ इनफ्लोस थी और 25% पे इनफ्लोस की क्या प्रेजेंट वैल्यू थी फिर हम लोअर रेट को पहले लिखते हैं यानी इफ वी आर इंटरप्रेटिंग 20 एंड 25% सो फर्स्ट वी विल राइट 20% एंड देन वी विल ऐड अ सर्टेन फ्रैक्शन ऑफ 5% 
and this 5% is the difference of 20 and 25%. Yani agar hum 20 or 30% ko interpolate kar rahe hote, to hum 10% ki koi fraction lete. Agar hum 20 or 23% ko interpolate karenge, to iska difference 3% hoga jisko hum formula mein liktenge. Now this, in this particular case, this 5% will be applied, multiplied by the difference of the present values of cash inflows at the lower rate. Yani 20% per hamari present value ki uh, inflows ki present value kya thi? That is 108,872. Or hamari outflow thi 100,000. So, inka difference hum lenge jo ke is case mein hoga 8,872. Is amount ko hum divide karenge with the difference of the sum of present values of inflows at 20% and 25%. Because ye do rate hai jine hum interpolate kar rahe hai. So, 108,872 में से जो 20% पे present value है inflows की, उसमें से minus करेंगे 95,821 को, जो के present value है inflows की है 25%, और ये जो answer हमारे पास आएगा, ऊपर वाले 8,872 को इससे divide करेंगे. This will give us a figure in decimal, yani ye answer hamare paas one se less aayega. Ye fraction hogi 0.67, 0.33, 0.45, koi bhi fraction hamare paas aasakti hai and that fraction will then be multiplied by 5%. Again to remind, ye 5% kya hai? Ye un do rates ka difference hai jin ko hum interpolate kar rahe hai, yani 20 or 25%. So, this fraction ko hum 5% se jab multiply karenge, to humare paas ek value aa jati hai. 20% ko agar hum decimal mein likhe, to ye 0.2 hai. Or 5% ki wo fraction se humne jab multiply kiya, to humare paas jo answer aya, wo 0.034 hai. So, hum in dono ko add karenge, to humare paas 0.234 answer aata hai which is in percentage equal to 23.4%. Ye wo value hai jisko hum IRR kahenge. Is it truly the exact value of IRR of the project? No, or maybe we can say that this may be the true value or may not be the true value. Why it may not be the true value is because when we have calculated the fraction we have you know, rounded it off to the nearest decimal place. That is, the answer of this fraction is 0.33333. Maybe it is continuing to many decimal places, but because we have rounded it off, so the effect of rounding will appear here, and the answer that we get will not be 100% accurate. Second thing is that whenever we are interpolating, you know, the difference between the two rates of return that we interpolate will also make our result less uh, accurate. Yani, agar hum a 5% ke difference ko interpolate karenge, to wo zyada accurate hoga. Or agar 10% ke difference ko interpolate karenge, to wo kam accurate hoga. Or agar 2% ke uh, difference ko interpolate karenge, to wo or zyada hamare paas precise result. Aega. So that means that 2% ka difference nikalne ke liye shayad hume aur 2-3 martaba hit and trial method ko apply karna padta. In any way, this is the formula that we need to keep in our mind to calculate the value of IRR using interpolation. And now finally, what do we do with this rate? Ye jo 23.4% humare paas aya, isko kya karenge hum? On the basis of this result, we'll have to either accept the project or we have to reject the project. Now, what we'll do is we'll compare this uh, internal rate of return with our required rate of return, which will be there before we actually start the calculation of IRR. If IRR 
is exactly equal to our required rate of return on the dot, we'll certainly accept that project. If IRR is more than our required rate of return, more is the merrier. So that means it is even better that whatever we wanted to earn from the project, it is giving us even more than that. And finally, if it is less than our required rate of return, agar IRR hamare required rate of return se kam ho jaye, phir kya karenge? Iska matlab ye hai ki hum project se jitna return earn karna chahte the, project hume utna rate of return provide nahi kar raha and this becomes the basis of rejecting the project. So, uh, to conclude this, we can say that we'll calculate IRR by discounting the cash flows by applying the hit and trial method. Then we'll interpolate those values and come up with uh, a somewhat accurate value of the rate of return of the project. And finally, we compare it with the required rate of return. Agar required rate of return ke barabar ya usse zyada IRR hoga, to project ko accept kar liya jayega aur usme investment ki jayegi. Aur agar IRR humare required rate of return se niche chala jayega, to hum us project ko reject kar denge.